welcome everybody to the Ameristate Legal Plan Business Partner Town Hall Meeting. Um, I am Michelle Reese Johnson. I am VP of Sales and Business Development. I've been here for 25 years doing my thing, helping people get educated and protect what's important to them and talking to our business partners who are our main influencers, getting the word out. And I want to also introduce John Knickerbocker. Uh, some of you have talked to him. I'm sure most of you here have had a conversation with John. So John is our senior manager of business development. We're here to focus on you, our wonderful business partners who tell their clients about why a living trust is important and why they need to set it up and help you put that in place for them because we're all better together, right? I love that. We're better together. So John, uh, why don't you kick it off? I'm going to go ahead and put up some slides so we can follow along and we can make sure we stay on track. And if everybody can see those site, those this um, slide presentation, let me know if I have it up here correctly. I think I do. John, is it up there correctly for you? I don't see it. Okay. So I'm going to start that. It. I think that's what I need to do is press start. Sorry about that. Start. Here we go. Oh, there I did it. it. Yay. There I'm it so is. proud of myself. Yay. Okay. Well, so <laughs> go ahead, John. <laughs> well, I'm going to start by saying this is the first time we've used this platform. That's why you're kind of, uh, you know, clicking around. Um, but I, I like this platform for uh, webinars and presentations. It's new and our marketing director and IT uh, person, Caroline Hunter and Scott uh, Pringle, he, uh, th they got this set up for us. So I like this platform. I'm looking forward to using this in the future. You know, um, today it's how to identify viable clients. A lot of us that uh, are on here today have a pretty good idea how to identify and you might have your own way of bringing up the conversation of the importance of estate planning. Uh, one thing we're going to be doing in the near future is a uh, we're doing an open forum. Is that what it is, Michelle? Is that what the uh, yeah, we're going to be doing open an open forum, forum which which will help our, all our business partners come together and share ideas, share conversations uh, you know, today we, we have, you know, people that that join us, that that work with us. Uh, I think so everyone just knows who might be in, who our business partners are, who you might be able to in, in, introduce us to, which some of you are are wonderful about bringing our platform to your associates. But, you know, financial planners, CPAs, realtors, mortgage professionals, notaries, uh, you know, we work with credit unions. So uh, all these different types of professionals that are in a position to help their clients understand the importance of estate planning and, uh, you know, learn about Ameristate and how we're helping clients put, you know, their their estate plan and protect what's important to them in place it is, is what we're all about. Just as Michelle touched on, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what you folks are here for, you know, to to identify, you know, viable clients and and to share ideas and get new ideas on how to bring it up to clients, you know, because because a realtor may bring it up in one way, uh, it, which could be different from a financial planner to an insurance a professional to a notary. So those are the kinds of things that we want to be able to share and talk about and and just, you know, keep the awareness up amongst our business partners of the importance of bringing it up and how to bring it up and and always just kind of an educational platform. So I wanted to start by just, you know, mentioning who all we work with. Uh, so, you know, if there's ever an opportunity to uh, introduce us to any associates, we'd of course welcome that. Um, but on to kind of our first slide here, you know, how to identify a viable client. And you know, with, with a number of the, you know, our business partners that, you know, I've met with, you know, a lot of my, you know, as far as the role that the business partner, 
you know, plays, be it, you know, you might be on our business plus platform or maybe a simply refer platform, but it's really to identify, qualify and tee up your prospective clients. You know, you identify who the clients are, you know, it, you know, do they have a home? Do they have minor children? Uh, do they own a business? Do they have investment properties? Maybe they have a special needs dependent uh, in their family. You know, the different things that are going to trigger probate and or identify them as someone that should have an estate plan, which is most people, you know, to be able to identify them is the first step. But then to be able to, you know, qualify them where you have that conversation. And that's where our different professionals are going to take that first step, that first conversation, you know, kind of opening that that question of, do you have an estate plan? Do you know you already have an estate plan? You might not like it. That's the estate. That's the state's estate plan. But but having that conversation um, and qualifying them is is, you know, a big part of it, just bringing it up you know, letting them know that this is something you can help them get started with it is is a lot of it because people just don't know where to get started. It, and so that's, you know, having that, you know, qualify them, see where they're at with it and then teeing them up, you know, having that conversation of, you know, I can help you get started on this. This is the way it works. It, it's It's a lot more important and probably a lot easier and less expensive than you may realize. And, and getting them teed up and helping them get started, again, is is a big part of our business partner's role and bringing the awareness to them. So so that's, you know, the, the identify, qualify and tee up is is a lot of, you know, just getting it started. Right. And then, well, let's look you know, at these um, who needs a living trust right here on the slide. Yeah. Yeah. If you would share a little bit of of that with us so we can go do a little back and forth here. Michelle. Right. So who needs the living trust, everybody? Well, you guys, most of you have been with us for a while, so you kind of have the idea. I know you have the idea, but I think we have some new people with us too. And by the way, um, if you have questions, we're going to um, handle those questions at the end of this. Just put them in chat and we'll go through them with you if you have specific questions and things like that. So anyways, Everybody needs something as long as you're 18. That's always my what I preach. If you're 18, if I if I know my friends' kids have just turned 18, guess what is happening? I'm calling them and I'm saying, "You're, you know, Jane's 18 now. Let's get her powers of attorney in place." Well, why does she need that? And I help educate them on that. And Ameristate has a great ICE, what we call it, in case of emergency package for $350. It gives them a four-year membership in the legal plan which accesses a wallet card and houses their power of attorney for health up in the cloud in case they're out and about and they get in an accident so as long as you have clients who have teenagers let's let's maybe start there and then you can maybe if those clients those teenagers parents don't have their trust guess what they probably need a trust because they probably have real estate. Number one, if anybody owns real estate, you need a living trust. You got to play the game, especially in California. You pass away, your real estate goes to probate. It's a nightmare. We don't want that happening. If you're a real estate agent, you know what happens. You can't even sell the house. You're trying to list a property and then it's going through probate. It's sitting around for a couple of years. So let's make sure that if you're a realtor, make sure those clients, you're following back up with those clients to say, you really need to have a living trust. I just sold you this house or go back to your client list. Um, the next thing is minor children. If you have minor children or special needs dependents, you these people need a living trust, even if they do not own any property. They need one because these minor children should not be put on as beneficiaries to bank accounts, um, insurance policies. Uh, you need to maybe have the trust as a beneficiary behind the spouse. So just know minor children, special needs children, and the state plan is super duper important for these um, families. Um, another one is what if you just want to make sure that this a certain child gets the house 
and this other child gets the bank account. Well, if you don't have a trust with special instructions in there to make that happen, how are you going to put a child on to make sure that child gets the property without going to probate? You need a trust to put those specific instructions in there. We just had a client just two weeks ago. She put her minor children on title to her property. The recorder will record that. It, it, it's not against the law to put them to say I grant fifty percent of my house to you know uh, Jake and Laura who are eight years old. So all three of us own the house together. Well, guess what? She wants to refinance her house. She's got minor children on there. They can't sign a deed over back to her. It is a it's a total mess. So don't put minor children on title to your assets. Period. Put your assets in a trust, have them put their assets in a trust and, and put instructions for those minor children. What about if you have blended families? Gosh, that's very popular, right? Uh, most of America is a blended family now. And blended families come with their own situations, right? Jealousy or I had this before I married you. This was my our house where I grew up with my mom and, you know. And so blended families are, it's super important for them to have clear instructions if something happens to them, where their assets are going to go and how those are going to be distributed because there's going to be a lot of fighting afterwards if, if our blended families don't set up an estate plan and make it very clear. Let's say you just have a business. A lot of people are just starting out and they're opening up businesses. Well, guess what? You've got a bank account. Uh, a business uh, account, let's say it's uh, Joe's Car Wash, and you have uh, that set up as a sole proprietor or in an LLC or in a corporation, and you have your bank account set up as Joe's Car Wash with the tax ID number. Well, if Joe passes away or becomes incapacitated, there is no nothing that is going to... Uh, have somebody step up to manage that business for Joe if he can't do it himself or if he passes away anything in that business account at the bank is going to be held in probate or stuck in probate if it's over the probate threshold for the the state's threshold which is California's 185 ish so um, business is it's super important to have your if you just all you have is a business but you're you're starting out, you need to have a trust to make sure that you have somebody who can help control that business if you can't, or that business won't go through probate if you die. Super important. Uh, we have a lot of clients that have very valuable assets. You have boats and planes and cars, um, collectibles, antiques, all of that is our valuable assets in all of that combined together if it's not set up in a trust, we'll be stuck in probate as well if somebody passed when that person passes away. So yeah, let's get those expensive toys into the trust. Um, of course, those have lots of money, right? Um, you got to have to have a trust. You got to play the game. The game is set up an estate plan. It's a one time deal. Um, it's it's not like buying insurance as John was saying somebody you know it's kind of like you need to get insurance for your family car insurance health insurance life insurance guess what you got to pay on that every month you set up a living trust you have your estate plan insurance it's like you're a protection you pay for it one time Yes, as time goes on, you're going to make amendments and changes, but those are very minor. The cost of that is very minor when your clients work with the Maris State Legal Plan. But it's not like I've got to spend um, 300 bucks a month for my uh, life insurance policy or even 100 bucks a month for my life. That's going to go on forever. A trust is a one-time fee, so don't let your, your people say, well, I can't afford it. Well, yes, they can't afford it. There's there's ways to go about it, and you just kind of have to explain it to them. Like, you cannot not afford this. This is a must. And then, you know, you've got people that are in the movie industry. They've written books and scripts, and they have intellectual property. Those things go through probate, too. 
So it, that's really, really very important to make sure that these are all wrapped up into an estate plan. So these are just basic things to think about when you're at a party, you're talking to your parents, you have your neighbors, and your book of business where you are a professional that you have tax clients, you have real estate clients, you have insurance clients. This is this is some should be part of your package or your added value add that you do every day. Just put it as your value add and make sure you bring up the subject, right, John? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's so true. You know, as as Greg, you know, Greg Reese, your brother, our CEO. You know, as he taught me years and years ago, you, the, our, our most successful business partners that really utilize our expertise in, in, you know, estate planning are the ones that are proactive, the ones that are bringing it up, the ones that are, you know, that realize with that previous list that you just covered, which most all of us and, you know, here uh, joining us today know it, but it's, it's, it's realizing and, and letting the clients know, prospective clients know that. If, you know, upon incapacity or, or unfortunately upon death, if any one of those things that that you have, which most people are going to be checking the box on multiple of those things that would trigger probate or reasons why you need to have, you know, your your legal documents in place. Um, you know, if any one of those happen, you know, they're you're off to probate. Um, so. It, people just don't realize that there's multiple things that they're going to, that's going to catch them and, and, you know, cause a problem, you know, between, you know, homes, investment properties, businesses, minor children, assets, intellectual property, you know, all, all those things, people, pe a lot of people probably don't even think about their intellectual property, you know, and, they don't. and a lot of people, and, and you have to find, you know, and, and again, and identifying and conversation starters, which, I think it's coming up next, but you have to identify their pain. You know, the client's pain might be, oh my God, I had no idea. Probate's going to cost eight, you know, six to eight percent of the gross value of our estate. You know, that's a that's going to be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So financial professionals, I you know, my little play on, you know, where can you find a better return on investment from a give or take two thousand dollar trust compared to what you know, probate's going to cost at tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, insurance agents, you know, again, it might be, you have to be in it as you touched on earlier, Michelle, you need to, you, you've taken the steps to get your car insurance, homeowner's insurance, life insurance, but have you taken the step to ensure that your entire estate doesn't go through probate? You know, realtors, again, like you touched on realtors, their angle and the things that their clients, their pain point is, you know, I help you, you know, one of your largest assets is typically going to be the home I sold you. You know, I, I want to stay in touch with you to make sure we take the steps to protect your home and your entire family from probate. So everyone's going to have their angle between their profession and the things that are going to trigger probate. You know, it's it's we all know it, but it's it's just kind of being aware of you, we have, you know, through our joint effort. We have to bring the awareness in different ways to our clients. But that that list is, you know, it, it catches everyone. You know, only about 30 yeah. percent of homeowners in most states have an estate plan. A lot of those are are dated. So the, the opportunity to serve clients, attract new clients, you know, uh, is is significant. It's that's why estate planning right now is so big, especially after COVID. Of course, the momentum is still going. So many people still need our help in putting, you know, a comprehensive, custom, attorney prepared, yet affordable estate plan in place. So the conversation starters, the triggers, the pain points, you know, all things that we know that, you know, are there, but here to work, you know, uh, you know, as a team, uh, you know, as a, a mayor state business partner to bring, bring this forward to the client. So it takes a village. Kind of give a summation to that. <laughs> takes a village everybody seriously and we got to keep bringing it up to our clients especially if you're a professional in a professional field uh you you're in taxes your insurance you're in real estate maybe uh you're a notary 
notaries are so important because you guys see it all the time. You're out there delivering loan documents and most of those clients do not have a trust in place. And so this is a great opportunity for you to just say, Hey, I noticed that um, you're, re you're, you're, you're refinancing. Um, do you have an estate plan? Oh, well, no, we don't. Oh, well, you know, I can help you get that started and just kind of give them a couple points about why it's important. So yeah, anyway, with, so with, just make sure that you you definitely bring up in conversation. Now, let's go to the next things, the life events that trigger uh, needing an estate plan or, or an update on an estate plan. So life events. Okay, so here's another um, viable um, conversations right here. You have friends or family that um, have an illness. Maybe your mom is not feeling good. Maybe you're seeing dementia come up. Um, let's get that estate plan in place before it's too late to get her powers of attorney in place. Uh, you get married. That's a great uh, opportunity to say, wait a minute, I need to update my estate plan or I need to get an estate plan with my new wife or husband. Or if I get a divorce, you're, you're going to separate and you're, you're going to need to get your own estate plan separate from your ex-wife or husband. A spouse passes away. This is the time to make sure you get an estate plan. If you don't have an estate plan, let's update those documents to take care of that spouse passing away and making sure that you're updating your deeds and whatnot. Uh, if you move, you move to another state. Now, we're in California, Texas, Tennessee, Arizona, Virginia, and Maryland. Uh, but and our trust will go to any state you move your clients move to, but there are certain documents that should be updated to, for that state specific. Uh, your wills and powers of attorney need to be a, more of a state specific document and will help that client get in touch with an attorney to help them in those states we're not in. You refinance your property. A lot of people did that, right? Well, a lot of times they've pulled that property out of trust if they had a trust or uh, if you're a lender and you notice a client is coming to you to do a loan, this is a great opportunity to go, hey, have you thought about putting getting your estate plan in place? It's really important to do that. So that's a great way to identify a client who either needs to update their trust or make sure that house is put back into the trust. Um, you have children turning 18. We talked about that. Let's get those powers of attorney for them in place in their Amerisate ICE package. You have a child. You need to add that child into your trust or make sure that trust is set up in case something happens to you. And then, of course, the special needs family members. You have clients. There's lots of that. You know, we have a lot of special needs um, families that need a trust. Uh, oftentimes, the special needs um, child or adult child they don't need their own special needs trust for the most part, but the parents need to make sure that there are special needs language in a trust that would, if they pass away, that would carve out like a sub special needs trust for that child. So their benefits don't get um, canceled if they're on public benefits. So just some life events when people have life events, let's just make sure that you're bringing up that subject again. Um, so here's some conversation starters. Why don't you go over that, John? And we have, <coughs> I also have, and I can email this to everybody. It's common, common objections regarding uh, a living trust. So John, first, why don't you start with the conversation starters? And then I will go over a couple common objections and things that people come back with. And I'll give you some ideas of what to say to that. And then I can also email you this uh, conversation starters and uh, handling those objections. Go ahead, John. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we, you know, the conversation starters, we, we have a lot of customizable uh, flyers and information that our business partners can utilize to, to push out to their clients to, you know, you, you know, uh, what we, uh, your webinar, your website content, we can help you with that. Uh, we can help you with with flyers, custom flyers, 
different informational things that you can use in order to help that conversation get started. And, and that's a lot of it, you know, being, you know, again, depending on what profession, uh, professional background you have, that's going to be, you know, a lot of it is just starting with the, the conversation starters, bringing it up, uh, depending on, you know, what the angle is. Uh, so, you know, people, a lot of, a lot of it is people need to realize it's way more important than they may think. And when working with Ameristate, a lot easier and less expensive to complete. So uh, the conversation starters between what we have to offer and, and what our professionals, what their angle is, is a lot of that, is the conversation, uh, you know, starting the conversation, asking the question, you know, do you have an estate plan? With, with notaries, back to the notaries, you know, we, it, they're in a great position, like Michelle said, even though it's they have their code of ethics and morals where they can't really bring it up too much at the delivery table. But they can always ask that question, which is, an, is a way for a notary to bring up the importance of it, maybe on another appointment, a follow up phone call or something like that. So um, what other conversation starters were we going to touch on today? Well, I, I, I think we were just going to talk about you know just ask the question do you have an yeah. estate plan or i see you're doing your loan docs do you have an estate plan or just keep after those clients because they need to hear it over and over again they really really do and you're their go-to person for whatever your profession is and so helping them make sure that they're keeping that you know front of mind is so important because they life gets busy and they forget but if you can remind them hey let's get your estate plan started or let's go ahead and take care of this this year or what's your goal on getting your estate plan started so i think it's really really um good just to keep that conversation going when you meet with them you talk to them you email them estate planning is super important as we know and what's so nice is you can be involved in the process and be compensated for your time and influencing and talking. So I love it. I love the way we're set up. By the way, if any of you have not been on our business partner website, you can find conversation starters on the webs website, which is www.ameristate.biz, B-I-Z. Get on there, log in, and go in there, and you'll find the flyers, you'll find the conversation starters, and um, log in and go to the resource section, Caroline says. And then also, I'm going to go ahead and upload the common objections regarding getting a living trust as well to our business partner website. This could be helpful for you when people say, well, I can't afford it right now. We've got a good answer for that. Or here's another one. I want to think about it. Or I want to talk to my kids about this. Yeah, it, if I, I can add have a will. Yeah, I already have a will that spells everything out. Why do I need a trust? Um, yeah. I have a friend or a relative who's an attorney. Um, I can have them do it for me. Uh, or I'm not interested. I don't want to do it. So we have, you know, I've got some good stuff for you to come back to on that. And what if what if uh, Ameristate goes out of business? You know, we, we have all that, which we're, we're, we're going to be here forever, guys. Um, I, I, don't, gonna, I don't think I can make make all the decisions I need before I get started. It's like, oh, it's going to be too expensive or I don't have time for that. So we've got some good comebacks for you. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say back to the uh, the conversation starters uh, and the business partner website. Yeah, that's where that's where our business partners can find them. A lot of us here today may be familiar with those. There's also scripts in there, too, that that mm. can help, you know, our business partners with just guiding the conversation to well let's go ahead and, and take the next step as well as mm -hmm. if you know another thing that i'll kind of add why we're on the business partner website is we also have webinar and and seminar uh tools in there for our business partners that are interested in doing webinars seminars and and taking it kind of to that that next level of really getting out there and promoting your business and attracting new clients that material is there as well and I, I think the uh, there's a couple places that our business partners can find the flyers and conversation starters 
in the website, uh, the one you mentioned, as well as I think under, they go under the documents tab as well. The conversation starters are there too. So another another place to find it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I love it. Um, actually, and also we have what's called a business partner toolkit. It's in the business partner website. Caroline had uploaded this for me here. Let's see here if I can open it up. Uh, files. I think I put it in there. Not sure. Not sure if I did that right, Caroline, but I, I clicked on files. So maybe it got to everybody. Caroline, you can let me know. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so, but it's on the business partner website. It's a really handy uh toolkit that goes through Caroline put a wonderful thing together for you to help you as a study it's kind of like a study guide a little bit so I think the more information the more tools you have at hand the better off you're going to be explaining why an estate plan is important a lot of you already have that down I see it I see it you guys are excited the clients are excited they thank you they love you so much it's such a wonderful feeling to be involved in this process and helping people set up their estate plans and I thank you all business partners for being partners with us and I see the business flying through and you guys are doing great things out there so I appreciate it very much and your clients do too so anyways I think this is the last slide we have the estate planning process and the role of a mayor estate um, consult with your client on their estate planning needs and advise them to schedule a free mayor estate consultation this is for people that just strictly want to refer clients to us Okay, so you know how you go to the business partner website and you refer that client and then our in-house people will take care of it and you'll be kept in the loop. Or if you're what we call a full circle or refer plus agent, you know the drill, you sell it, you collect the money, a lot of time you guys are delivering it and uh, you just like that more involvement. So we have different ways to get you involved. You, don't, you can be all in or part in. Okay, so just let us know how you like to work. And so let's see. And once they're, oh, really important. Once, if you're a referring agent, but you're also in the business of insurance or financial planning or taxes, and, and uh, you're referring the client, you're going to be kept in the loop as to what's going on with that client. And once that estate plan is done, you're going to get the, the ping that your client's estate plan is finished. Now's the time to follow up with them. This is for you to circle back with that client and say, how did things go? Let's go ahead and, and look at uh, follow up and make sure your assets are in your trust, like your banking, your checking, your CDs. We're going to take care of their deeds and all that and get it recorded. And we're also going to consult with them about these are your next steps. Call your advisors to get things rolling. Uh, but this is a great way for you to circle back, make another call and say, do you have anybody else that needs to get their estate plan done? And usually they're like, we're so happy we did this. My mom needs to do it. My brother needs to do it. My neighbor is asking me about it. They were the witness. So it's a great opportunity for you to get more clients. So this, it's not just about protecting your clients, about you also making more connections. So the estate plan is a wonderful tool for you. So with that said, um, we're we're at the end of our how to identify a viable client, and I'd like to open this up to anybody who has questions. So if you guys have any questions you would like us to answer live, we can do that right here. Um, let me see. What, oh, while you're, looking, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. While you're looking through those questions in the chat, I just want to say, you know, you and I are both one. Let everyone know. You and I both are always available should they have any client scenarios, any questions. Um, you, you know, we're available for a quick conversation, you know, help them, you know, get some answers back to their clients so their clients are comfortable to get them to take that first step with us. You know, so we want to be a resource as well for, you know, the clients, you know, the, our business partners and the client and the questions they may be asked of from from their you know clients and yeah with with our process michelle i think you know so many of our business partners love the fact we bring that through our automated reporting and keeping our our referring business partners in the loop through our automated reports and information we are bringing that client full circle back to them teed up with a trust which is where they can then identify 
what other services those clients may need that they can help with, or maybe some of their other business partners. Maybe someone's going to be selling a property. You know, a, a financial planner's client we find out is going to be selling a property. So we let the financial professional know so he can use his realtor connections to help his clients. So we are always looking for ways we can help our business partners, you know, uh, provide value add services and grow their business through our expertise and our partnership. So bringing them full circle and, and, a, and a big part of that is asking the question, you know, who, you know, do you have anyone else I can help get started with their estate planning needs? So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a great business growth model that can, that works all year long and for years and years to come. Yeah. Well, I don't think we have any questions. I just have a, a you're welcome, Jamie and Claudia. Thank you for, your comments and uh, and and the refresher that you appreciate. I, I really appreciate you guys and all that you do for us. If you're a notary, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for treating our clients and your clients like gold and getting their important documents delivered. And I'm sure you're getting a lot of kudos at the end of that saying thank you so much. So I appreciate everybody's time today. We're at 40 minutes. I think we all need to get going and, and continue with our day. But uh, shoot us an email if you have anything after the seminar that you think about. We're, ha we're here for you guys. And uh, we love, love, love working with our business partners. And thank you again. Bye. Bye, everybody.